Hello again. The idea for this video is I'll build something in Sims 2, then use that as inspiration to draw environment art on my sketchbook. My Sims need a nice place to retire after being my puppets of fate, so I'm building a hilltop church for them. Now I'm doing this in The Sims 2 even though it's an old game. While Sims 4 has released amazing building features, I don't have that game because if you add up all the expansion packs and extra content, The Sims 4 has a ridiculous price tag. People actually still play Sims 2 for the Build a City challenge. It's a challenge where you start with an empty neighborhood and a few founding sims. Depending on the rule sets you choose to follow, this challenge is one way to organically tell a story in Sims. At this moment in the video, I used some cheats to place details outside of the grid, small little touches to break away from the flat, rectangular structure. These wooden posts are meant for holding up roofs and upper floors, but I'm using them to frame the walls of the church instead. It's a chore to place the trimmings, but it will hide the grey bases under the posts. I downloaded some custom content for this build, like those wooden beams and red curtains. I realized that I didn't really decorate the interior that much. Interior decoration is something I should do more of if I'm going to make more videos like this. Some videos could be strictly interiors, that would describe the lives of the sims living in that space. This storytelling aspect is why I love watching Let's Build Videos for Sims 4. The best YouTubers among that category have the instinct of professional environment artists when it comes to using the furniture and decor to tell a story. As for the story behind this church, this is the kind of creepy church that inspires urban legends among the local kids, but a romantic wedding destination for the local goths. They have a wedding arc with the lovely view of the graveyard below as a reminder that only death can do them part. Meanwhile, on the other side of the church is a statue of the Grey Woman. Time has worn out the Grey Woman's real legend as the watcher of babies who protects them from fire. The local kids have since believed that she's a mourning woman with a vengeful spirit. There's a dare going on where any new kid has to light a candle at the foot of her statue by midnight, then ring the bell inside the church to summon the Grey Woman spirit. To the local goths, however, they just want to take selfies next to her statue to look deep. After everything is placed, I painted the terrain to connect the areas of the church together. The brown soil suggests pathways that people have taken to get around the church grounds while patches of grass highlight the vegetation. These colors aesthetically elevate the hilltop against the beige desert. For more finishing touches, I considered how this place would look at night. The church has been neglected by the town council, thus it was never modernized with electricity. So I littered the grounds with candles here and there as if it was November 1 every night. Or maybe the candles are for cult ceremonies and summoning the Grey Woman. Here's the hilltop church all zoomed out. There's enough space for my sims to decorate with their gravestones one day. The sims that are still alive advertise this place for their cult gatherings every Sunday, while weddings can happen any other day of the week. Spirit summonings are a bring-your-own-candle affair. And now it's time to take this build as inspiration for some art in my sketchbook. Here's a plot twist. I actually sketched this first page before building. This helped me come up with the hilltop idea. However, the Sims 2 church ended up with more vegetation than I imagined. Here in my sketchbook, I stuck with the creepy church atmosphere. I started the page with some church design explorations in a flat perspective. No vanishing points yet. I wanted to focus on how the church looks first, which would be an abandoned midwestern look. The town back then wouldn't have enough resources in the middle of nowhere to look any fancier. To compensate for its simplicity, it's outfitted with tall thin windows and a wooden arc above the door. 
These features give it an illusion of height, as the church is situated imposingly on top of the hill. I went against my own inking principles from the desert landscape video and totally inked the, the outlines of the church. In that video, I mentioned that I color first before inking to decide if it needs the ink. For this page, however, I felt that inking something architectural would emphasize its structure and rigid rigid rigidity. Rigidity? The imperfect brush lines also suggest texture and instability. To be honest, I'm still asking myself what kind of visual language will the inking style provide instead of simply tracing over a sketch. I experiment with colors first before I get to the scene sketched in the middle. I pick some warm grays for the wood, but a striking red for the roof. The windows are yellow because some ritual is in session. For the sky colors, I experimented with two shades of green and a magenta. The clouds are sharpened yellow for an even more sinister, weird western sky. They're not following any perspective, just swirling around to frame the church, as if the source of what's wrong in the scene is radiating from the church. The green sky looks good here when there are no plants alive on the ground. In one context, the color green can mean life in nature, but apply green where it doesn't belong, like the sky, and it reminds of the color of disgust and decay. The illustration in the middle really plays up the spooky, blighted atmosphere. I exaggerated the hills with dome shapes, and the graveyard is just spilling off of them. It has a peachy orange ground that reminds me of Arizona sand. I'm definitely not from Arizona, but I know that state for its red canyons. I really like how coloring all of the scene in looks like the page has a portal to somewhere weird and western. Weird western. I considered framing it with black marker, but I'll just leave it borderless, as it is. On to the next page. I drew this after making that Sims 2 build, so I wanted to focus on the scenes around the church. The top row are some variations on grave markers, from cheap wooden crosses to modest tombstones. The next row, I tried drawing another variation of a door and a window, but again, the church couldn't be any fancier. 
On the lower half of the page are some of the major attractions on the church grounds. I turned the Grey Woman statue into an angel for a more gothic appeal. I intended to hide her behind the tree and some shrubs. The foliage wasn't doing it for me though. It didn't look integrated into the scene. So I erased that and surrounded the statue with a dead tree and broken fencing. The second frame is the scene from the previous page, but tighter and with some perspective work. Pushing the gate further into the foreground welcomes churchgoers into the holy or unholy grounds. The third frame is the wedding area. I'm least satisfied with this one since the strength of this area was a wedding arc overlooking the graveyard. I used a Unipin brush pen on the previous page, but on this page I switched to a platinum signature brush pen. The Unipen has a better line quality, but I achieve some dry textures from the signature pen whenever I tilt the brush on its side. I'm using it to spread some bolder shadows across the page. The coloring on this page is much tamer since it's more detail-oriented. I didn't even color the sky green out of fear that it would drown the brushwork. The yellow clouds stay because they still aid the composition. Overall, what I can do with these thumbnails is redraw them into bigger canvases. I recognize flaws in the composition, so I know what to avoid when I make polish works out of them. That's a process for another video because here comes my favorite part, adding borders with a black marker. If you made it this far, thank you for watching. I hope you like and subscribe if you find this video helpful in some way. I'm not sure about this build and draw video format, so comment to let me know what you think and if this is something you'd like to see more of. I would really appreciate the feedback. Bye!